question. At Enactus U Ottawa, we believe that building a better world starts at home. Being from the nation's capital, we see firsthand the hardships and struggles that Canadians face every day. Rather than traveling to other communities around the world, we are focused on Canada, using our knowledge of sustainable business to improve the livelihoods of people across our country. In Canada today, our growing immigrant population is struggling to integrate into society. Our northern Canadians are surrounded by a life of poverty and crime. And one in five people in Canada has a mental illness and is lacking support. Today, we will share with you three of our nine projects which we have built from the ground up to fill these gaps. The projects, ideas and results that you'll hear during our presentation were all accomplished by our team. Not by our university, not by our faculty advisors, not by our community partners, but by a group of students who have come together through the shared belief that the power of business can forever change lives and transform society. My name is Ajmal Sitar. My name is Hannah Bazadi. My name is Kathleen Kemp. And my name is Sam Toom. And joining us on tech is Saim Reza and Timmy Guo. Today, we will walk you through how we see opportunity, take action, and enable progress to empower people to change their lives and to build a better Canada. Two years ago, our team met Layla. She immigrated from Uzbekistan in 2011 as a refugee. Because of a lack of transferable skills, Layla was unable to find a job, and like many other newcomers to Canada, was relying on social assistance as her primary source of income. This doesn't allow for her children to grow up in a stable family environment, thus perpetuating the cycle of poverty and limiting her opportunities in the future. While conducting a needs assessment in our community, we found Eco Equitable, a local charity that was already teaching underemployed immigrant women how to sew. However, Eco Equitable was solely relying on charitable donations to fund its operations. While meeting with Eco Equitable, another huge need was brought to our attention, textile or fabric waste. Each year, the average Canadian disposes of 30 pounds of textile waste, which ends up in our landfills. And when decomposed, this same textile waste releases harmful methane gas, which ends up in our atmosphere. With this newfound knowledge, our team saw an opportunity to create jobs for the women, to keep the charity sustainable, and to recycle harmful textiles away from our landfills. So we decided to take action by creating the Eco Equitable Boutique. This click and mortar fashion boutique sells women's fashion accessories made from repurposed fabric and by underemployed immigrant women. While Eco Equitable continued to teach the women how to sew, our NACTUS team handled all business operations and retail training. We started by creating a business plan and profitable business model, including financial forecasts, a marketing operation strategy, as well as an overall vision for our enterprise. Our next step was to find a sustainable source of fabric to make our products. We connected with local distributors, as well as accepted donations from the community. This heavily decreased our costs, and we were also diverting harmful textiles away from our landfills. In a saturated market, our boutique had to be unique. We wanted to allow customers to feel as if they were a part of our empowerment journey. To do so, a customized tag is attached to each product, profiling the story of one of the immigrant women employed by the boutique. To further differentiate, we developed our own e-commerce website that the women now use to sell their products online. Offline, we set up pop-up stores across the city to increase our sales, but also provide more job opportunities for the women. To ensure seamless operations between the online and physical store, we implemented an inventory management system, which handled all inventory levels, accounting, and sales. The women were trained to use the system and other business operations through our holistic entrepreneurial training program. This program was developed and facilitated by our NACTUS team to ensure the boutique would remain sustainable. This on-the-job training includes customer service, operations, marketing, and selling. So far, 16 women have graduated from the program and 40 are currently enrolled. Upon graduation, the women receive an eco-equitable boutique retail certificate, which they can then use to seek other employment opportunities. The Eco Equitable Boutique was launched in March of 2014 and has been a successful triple bottom line enterprise. We were able to break down the barriers of employment and create new jobs for 16 immigrant women, have generated over $21,000 in revenues, and have diverted 7,000 pounds of harmful textiles away from our landfills. When we first started this project, our desired outcome was to directly change the lives of these underemployed immigrant women and empower them to the point where they no longer needed our support. And now, we're proud to announce that we have reached our goal and the boutique is fully self-sustaining. We succeeded in transferring our knowledge and business operations and now this triple bottom line business is being run by the women independently of our Enactus team. 
with the success of our business model and strategy here at home, we're in a position to share our methods to empower in needs groups across Canada. We're currently working with a corrections facility and women's shelter in Nunavut to create an online boutique featuring Inuit products to empower women through entrepreneurial action. And remember Layla? She has now graduated from our program and has a full-time position in a management role within the boutique. We have broken the barriers to employment for Layla and 15 other immigrant women who are now integrating into society and improving the livelihoods for themselves and for their children. Over the past four years, our Enactus team has become leaders in Ottawa's entrepreneurship ecosystem after developing our very own experiential training program, TeenGage. TeenGage has been a way for thousands of youth to create their own jobs through entrepreneurship after we recognized that Canada's youth unemployment rate was at 14.1%. However, the issue of youth unemployment is not unique to Ottawa. So this year, we decided to build on our success in one of the most impoverished places in all of Canada, Iqaluit, Nunavut. Nunavut is the youngest territory in Canada, and it has only been two generations since the Inuit have been living their traditional, semi-nomadic way of life. They are now living a more modern lifestyle, but none of it is in a state of social crisis. Suicide and homicide rates are 10 times higher than the national average, and the youth unemployment rate is double the rest of Canada. To learn more about this crisis, our team traveled to Iqaluit last October. We wanted to learn more about the root cause of these struggles, so we spoke with local high school students, educators, and government officials who knew the community best. They told us that traditional business is not welcomed by many in Iqaluit because it doesn't align with their values, culture, or education levels. In a survey conducted with 50 youth in the community, less than 5% even knew what entrepreneurship was. But we saw an opportunity with something that did resonate well with them, social enterprise. When we returned to Ottawa, we took action by developing a social entrepreneurship training program which embedded local Inuit culture and values, the first of its kind in Canada. Five months later, we went back and delivered this three-day program focused on six key topics revolving around starting a business or social enterprise. To ensure we fully empower the youth even after our visit, we partnered with Cisco and their telepresence technology in order to provide ongoing remote mentorship. By leveraging this technology, this limits our travel and leads to a reduction of our carbon footprint by over 1.4 tons of CO2 emissions. To attract youth to the program, we partnered with local organizations and media outlets to get the word out. 30 youth participated in our pilot program and a number of incredible business ideas were generated. One of the businesses decided to tackle the thousands of pounds of waste in the dump by creating a furniture refurbishing business and employing at-risk youth. After hearing of our success in Iqaluit, we were requested by the Nunavut Department of Education and Teachers Association to develop a customized entrepreneurship curriculum. The best way to make this happen was through creating our very own Train the Trainer curriculum focusing on five key topics revolving around entrepreneurship. All of the content, activities, and guides were created by our Enactus team over the past four months. By training the territory's teachers with our methods, we will be able to empower every youth in Nunavut using entrepreneurial action. Our work in Nunavut has been a huge success, and we've received national media coverage as well as acknowledgement from the Nunavut Minister of Education. We work to improve the livelihoods of 30 youth in Iqaluit, and over the next year, we'll be working with another 2,500 across the territory. With the success of our program here at home, we started getting contacted by international organizations who wanted to learn from our innovative approach to entrepreneurial empowerment. And we were happy to share. Using our partnership with Cisco Video Conferencing, we are now using our Train the Trainer program to increase our impact and empower in needs groups around the world from home. In only four months, we're now working with 16 homeless men in Guatemala with Believe Guatemala, 10 women in Afghanistan with Women for Afghan Women, as well as in needs groups in 16 other countries. We have customized our program to each country, ensuring it's translated and adapted to local cultures, values, and education levels. This year, our Teen Gage project introduced entrepreneurship to over 800 individuals. We helped create six businesses which have seen revenues of $9,000, and our team reduced our carbon footprint by over 1.4 tons of CO2 emissions. Our Teen Gage project has evolved into something we could have never imagined. What started off as a local project was adapted to help the most in-needs groups in all of Canada, and from there, we've shared our methods with the world. A year and a half ago, our Enactus team picked up a news article about the number one most littered item in the world, cigarette butts. That day, we learned that cigarette butts accounted for 37% of all visible waste. In Ottawa alone, over 600,000 are littered every single day, and the city spends over $5 million annually cleaning them up. 
we went out to survey smokers and property owners to find out more about this problem. Our findings showed that 90% of smokers were unaware that cigarette butts were non-biodegradable, had fatal effects on animals, and were polluting our water systems. Smokers also found current receptacles to be impractical and unhygienic. In addition, property owners were having issues with vandalism and fires and had no solution to this problem. So our team saw an opportunity to create an innovative enterprise that effectively eliminates cigarette butts off of our city streets. While we were excited about the opportunities this business venture had for the environment, our team saw an opportunity to have a direct impact on our community. We wanted to use the jobs we were creating to provide meaningful employment to individuals who are often excluded from society, individuals with a mental illness. In Canada, it costs over $34,000 to support these individuals every year. And unemployment rates for this group range from 70 to 90% across Canada. Unemployment contributes to social isolation, increased substance abuse, and intensified mental health issues. By connecting all of these needs, our team took action by developing an innovative, triple bottom line social enterprise, SIGBINS, a cigarette butt collection and recycling service that effectively eliminates cigarette butts off of city streets, while also providing meaningful employment to individuals with a mental illness. Our first step was to address smokers' concerns with current receptacles being impractical and unhygienic. We teamed up with an industrial designer to create an innovative cigarette butt disposal unit. Smokers can now easily flick their cigarette butt into the convenient wide opening on our SIG bin. Our design also accommodates for issues property owners were having, as our bins are fireproof and their design prevents from damages and theft. Our SIG bin's business model is set up to have two revenue streams. First is the $120 installation fee, which takes care of the install per of the bin. Second is our recurring servicing fee, which is $30 per bin per pickup based on the number of times we collect from the SIG bin. With this pricing strategy, over 90% of our revenue is recurring. And with net profit margins of 60%, we're able to invest the majority of our profits back into helping the community. With an established business model in place, we needed to fill the servicing roles we were creating. So we reached out to Causeway Work Center, a nonprofit agency that helps individuals with a mental illness overcome employment barriers. Causeway Work Center provides us with suitable candidates who then receive above minimum wage and valuable work experience, while our team handles all training and operations. The servicing role includes cleaning up the SIG bin, maintaining the surrounding area, and transporting the butts to our storage facility. We've just seen a great opportunity, a great partnership between the two organizations. We look at SIG bins as being a great transitional employment opportunity for people, so they're working primarily on their own, with minimal supervision, earning a wage, and getting the experience they need to interface with other people in the community and to work for a private sector uh, business, which certainly is, uh, is what SIGBINS is. Just congratulations to SIGBINS Causeway, very appreciative of what you've done. Once we have a large enough accumulation of cigarette butts, our team takes the appropriate measures to send the butts to our, store, to our recycling partner. The recycling process begins first by composting the paper and tobacco. Then, the non-biodegradable plastic filter, the cellulose acetate, is sterilized and remade into new industrial products. We premiered SIGBINS last July at our launch event. There, we received support from our mayor, city councillors, and a number of community partners, as well as featured in 10 different media outlets. Over the past 10 months, we have garnered customers such as business improvement areas, small property owners, and some of the largest property management companies across Canada, such as Morgard Property Management. Because of the success of the past, three, of the past six months, Morgard is now retrofitting all 39 of their Ottawa properties with SIGBINS. Our SIGBINS initiative has been successful and it continues to grow. Let's hear what our mayor, Jim Watson, has to say. You go down any sidewalk in any built up commercial area in Ottawa and it's littered with hundreds of cigarette butts. And I think uh, the SIGBIN idea that has emerged from, from young people at the University of Ottawa and Club uh, is a great idea, and I've been very impressed with um, you know the uh, the proposal that's been put forward. Yeah, we have the problem; they have the solution. It's perfect. Over the past ten months, our Sigvin's business model has led to direct impact in our community. We were able to provide meaningful employment to five individuals with a mental illness, have generated over seventy-three thousand dollars in revenue, and have diverted one hundred thousand toxic cigarette butts off of our city streets. With the orders in our Ottawa sales pipeline alone, our 2015 projections are to employ six additional individuals with a mental illness, see revenues of 
$1,000 and recycle 2.4 million cigarette butts. And with our success in Ottawa, we saw an opportunity to share our methods with the rest of Canada. We've recently confirmed expansion with our current customers to their commercial building locations in Montreal and Toronto. This has the potential to create 25 new jobs for the Canadian economy. And when you step outside, you'll see the four Sigbins that we've installed here at the Metro Toronto Convention Center. And in 12 hours, they've already collected over 300 cigarette butts. C cigarette butts are so small. And it's hard to imagine the detrimental effects that they have on our environment, businesses, and people in general. But thanks to the power of sustainable business, we found a solution for these butts. And the outcome has been a cleaner environment and jobs provided to an otherwise marginalized group in our Canadian society. And this is what can be accomplished when students and just students from the nation's capital come together to use our knowledge of sustainable business to improve the livelihoods of people across our country. With a team of 85 members, we are running nine projects. Contributing over 20,000 volunteer hours. And working with 32 community partners. We are directly impacting thousands. Providing jobs for people who need them. And diverting waste while reducing our carbon footprint. Our team saw gaps in our community and created sustainable solutions for people in need. We saw harmful textile waste. And used it to create 16 jobs for underemployed immigrant women. We saw crime and unemployment. And created three social enterprises and empowered over 800 youth. And we saw toxic cigarette butt litter. And we created five jobs that integrate individuals with a mental illness back into society. Our team works each and every day to ensure the entrepreneurial passion is ignited first within Canada and then beyond. We are Enactus U Ottawa. Igniting, igniting the, the flame, flame within. within. We will now begin the question and answer period. Hi, good afternoon. Could you please describe one unique challenge facing the youth in Iqaluit and how you had to modify the Teen Gage program to ensure sustainability? Sure. So when we first got to Iqaluit, we met with a lot of the community members. And a big challenge the community was facing, well, the youth, was they wanted to integrate in this new society that we were providing with them, but they had a difficulty because they only also wanted to keep their culture. So they, didn't, they had a disconnect with traditional business, so we had to bring in their values and integrate it within entrepreneurship for it to work for them. So the students that were involved with our program were very excited as they were doing both. Did you... Uh have the opportunity to grab uh, Mayor, who was here, as an entrepreneurial opportunity to get your Sigba <laughs> containers into Toronto or not? That's the plan. We haven't spoken to him yet, but uh, we're hoping right. Jimmy gives him a call and uh, <laughs> we work something out. <laughs> <laughs> On your uh, eco-equitable equitable boutique, uh, you talked about the immigrant women not having uh, uh, transferable skills, yet you've graduated 16 of them. How did you identify what skills you needed to give them to transfer, and, and have you done that with those graduates? Yeah, so we created a customized retail training program that we ourselves developed uh, over the past year, and we had that uh, reviewed by our faculty and business advisory council to ensure that the topics that they were being taught were going to be relevant in the Canadian economy. So based on those skills, uh, we then delivered this to the women, and we had them participating in an eight-week on-the-job training program, which takes them through all of the different retail skills that will make them successful in uh, getting a job in uh, the Canadian economy. Uh, to date, we have graduated 16 women, and we've been able to fulfill all of those jobs within the eco Aqua Boutique. However, on the chance that in the future we cannot, we've made connections with local retailers in order to employ women throughout the Ottawa area using the retail skills and the certification they've received from our programming. Hi, can you tell us where and how the SIG bins are manufactured? Sure. So uh, part of the SIG bin is manufactured overseas, and part of it is manufactured locally. So we wanted to do a little bit of both. The reason why we chose uh, part of it being overseas is just to bootstrap as best as possible. And with that, we've gotten to 60% net margins, and that's allowed us to take all of those profits, invest it back in the business, and grow it much quicker.
can you tell us how many of the 30 youths you've involved in Teen Gage have actually gone on to start their own venture? So all 30 of those youth are from Iqaluit, and all 30 of them actually did end up starting a business. So one uh, was the furniture refurbishing business. We have a number of them that also were starting a tutoring business as there was a lack of tutoring services for young people in the community. We had other ones that were tackling low literacy rates by creating a mobile library. So we were, we were very successful in the program that all of them were starting businesses, and we're currently mentoring all of them through doing that right now. So we operate a mentorship program, and we're leveraging the Cisco video conferencing technology to connect with them uh, on an ongoing basis. Th in addition to that, we provide them with a $500 microloan to get them started on their business. And now we've, we're in the process of distributing that loan to them and uh, continuing to mentor them so that they can be successful in the future. How did you scale Teen Gage so quickly? So essentially it was through a train the trainer approach. So over the past four years, we've essentially become thought leaders in entrepreneurial training in Ottawa. So we figured it was a time to share these methods with the most in needs group in all of Canada. And from there, we've shared it with the whole world. So with the train the trainer approach, what we do is work with a community partner in each country that we work with, and then uh, customize the program to that country. And then they use our content and our mentored by us to disseminate the information to the participants. An example of that, in Guatemala, we translated all of the content into Spanish, and we actually, for our financial literacy, for example, uh, we looked at local prices for food, tax laws, and things like that to make it as relevant as possible to the participants receiving the information. With the Sigbins project, um, once you sort of, if there's a vision that they're everywhere across Canada, for example, how sustainable is it from a servicing only business um, and can it still employ the same number of people you'd expect? Yes, your time has expired. Judges and guests, please help me in thanking the team from University of Ottawa.